who have joined the meeting. So we have got enough members to start the meeting. Thanks. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Eddie. And good, uh, good morning to everyone. And uh, good uh, morning to and the uh, compliments of a, of a new year. This is our first uh, meeting in 2021. So I'm greeting you in style. Good morning to the minister. Good morning to the director general. Good morning to all other officials that are accompanying the, the minister and the director general. and. Uh, Good morning to members of parliament. I know we have been already working. Some we have met, some we have not. So, but receive uh, greetings from the office of the chairperson. The agenda of this meeting, it, it is as it appears. It is as it appears there. It will be welcoming and opening remarks, apologies, community discussions on, on the oversight visit to Bay Bridge and Legom, and uh, the briefing by Order General South Africa, and the briefing by the department. Before we go to the briefing by the department, we would have we will take some comments and and uh, answers to those comments. We're going to take three hours for this meeting. So the last, the last after the department number seven, it will not be necessarily closing the remark. There's another item there that correspondence, correspondence to the committee. Under that correspondence, it will be the letter, the letter that we keep on exchanging with the honorable meeting in the main. So, Eddie, do we have any apologies? Uh, Chair, I've got only one apology from Miss Tito. All right, uh, that apology is accepted. Any other apology, members? All right, thank you. Um, well, now item number.
A second, the members, honorable members. Mamuntape has been elected, has been. Chairperson. Yeah, the opposition yeah, will, will uh, assist the ANC in this matter. I see there's no one else from the ANC that can help, so I will second that from the opposition side, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, any further nominations? None. Thank you very much, Honorable Members. Mamutlape, Ngatajis Tulo, ma'am. Mam Kakas. Honorable members, good morning to the minister and your team, the acting DG and your team. Let me also greet the Auditor General of South Africa and the team that is here with us and say compliments to all of you colleagues. I take the opportunity now to welcome you to our first meeting in 2021. Under the difficult circumstances we're finding ourselves as South Africa, as the world, under this pandemic, we are operating under difficult circumstances with this new virus now. But uh, in all fairness, work has to be done. And I'm happy that uh, most of us are here. We welcome you today, honorable members and indicate that uh, as you have just heard, the chairperson is at the hospital. One of the twins is not well, is sick. And we wish uh, the little Roli Shasha speedy recovery. We wish speedy recovery to those who are still at home, who are still infected with this COVID. We also want our heartfelt condolences to members and the society who have lost they are loved ones due to COVID and those who departed due to other illnesses. Members will understand that one of our own, Honorable Mashati, has just lost um, her dad. We wish her strength and send her light in this time. We thank God, Honorable Members, that us today and she's well. And uh, let's continue to observe the regulations of COVID-19 to sanitize, maintain social distancing, and let's Um, I see I'm back. I don't Honorable know. Kaka, this, sir. Yeah, this heavy rains. I will try and switch off my video as the time goes on so that I don't contest with the network. Honorable members, we meet in today to deal with uh, just one item that is the Auditor General's uh, report. He's going, the Auditor General is going to brief us. And you, as I welcome you, Auditor General of South Africa, we're meeting after we lost Auditor General Kimi Makwetu and uh, may his soul rest in peace. We also wish Auditor General Malulaka a good year and we wish her and, uh, may, uh, good luck in her endeavor for good and clear governance. Honorable members, I want to indicate that uh, for sure you have seen also the department through the minister issued a statement yesterday. Today's briefing will be on entities of the former Dr. DLR. This is because the office of the speaker has agreed with the explanation given by the minister not to table the part that deals with the department on this uh, annual performance. Uh, on the annual report of entities. the department, so we will of be handling the only Dr. entities. I would before this is because the, auditor the office of the speaker has to take agreed us with the, the explanation given by the 
Honorable Minister, who is here with us, to just brief us and explain again to members the reason why today we're only dealing with entities and indicate to honorable members that uh, the permission has been granted by the office of the speaker. Hence, we will be only allowing the auditor general to brief us on the performance of entities. Honorable minister, let me allow you to briefly explain to the honorable members so that we give the auditor general time to brief the portfolio committee. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and honorable members, as well as the parliamentary staff and senior officials of the department. Would like to appreciate uh, this opportunity given to us, uh, honorable Chairperson, to just clarify once again, the reason we had to approach the speaker to indicate that we will not be able to table the report uh, at the required time because we are waiting for the finalization of the auditing of the agricultural land holdings account. And I'm sure the Auditor General in her presentation, she would uh, indicate uh, to the members the work that uh, we've been doing in that regard. As you will note, in terms of the audit process, we were requested that for the year 1920, we should actually present separately as former DAF and as former Dr. DLR. And that is what has happened. The Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries concluded the audit and then with all its entities and a presentation was made in time. With respect to the audit of Dr. DLR, work has been done by the Auditor General in terms of the department's uh, audit, as well as the entities, the only remaining account which forms part of the department's audit is the agricultural land uh, holdings account known as ALA. There had been uh, discussions about the accounting measures or rather reporting that the department is using, having had an agreement with treasury in that regard. But Auditor General had some concerns and therefore, because of those discussions which are not concluded, which also involve treasury, we then took a decision as a department to appraise and advise the speaker that these matters are going to create a delay from where we sit. And therefore we're asking that the speaker grants us a permission so that if by the 31st of January, we are not concluded, we actually have advised parliamentary in terms of the relevant section of the uh, legislation that allows uh, ministers to be able to do so when they are, understand that there might be a delay in terms of the presentation of their audit to parliament. So that is really what has held us up. And I'm sure the auditor general will also uh, make um, you know, her presentation in clarifying that issue. We thought it was necessary for us to actually make a press statement to clarify because there were some concerns that were even raised by some uh, members of the parties that are part of the portfolio committee who then went public uh, expressing their displeasure of the non-presentation of the annual report so we then had to clarify what are the circumstances and I thought I needed to do it before we go further today. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thanks, uh, Honorable Minister. From the Secretariat before we move, do we have any other apologies except of the Chairperson? and Honorable Mashati that we can note. Thank you, Chair. We've got an apology from DM Squatcher. He is on sick leave. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Hello. members. I don't have... Uh, 
any agenda here before me. I'm trying to check. For uh, the next item would then be the Auditor General, if I'm not mistaken. Honorable I'm Chairman. Trying to find... Honorable Chairman. Chairman. Come again. Yes, ma'am. Honorable State. Uh, honorable State, on a point of order, yes. Can I just ask yes, the, uh, what the minister said now, ask uh, something? Did we receive the the annual reports of the entities? Was that tabled? Do we have it? That is the first question. And then the second question, Chair, uh, oh, it's not a question, it's a statement that I want to make, is the fact that it's going to be actually very, very difficult to ask any relevant questions to the Office of the Auditor General because we're flying blind. For instance, um, in the report of the Auditor General that they speak about findings and adverse findings and all of that, but we don't know what it is. We don't know what is the detail. The detail is what we need to interrogate and we don't have that. So Chair, can we just find out firstly if any of the entities um, tabled their reports? We haven't received anything. What is also of a concern, Chairperson, and I want the Minister to note that I've started asking the questions last year that it was a concern that almost or more than 900 million rand from the agricultural landholdings entity was shifted towards the COVID agricultural disaster fund. And we all know that there's problems with that. So I would urge the minister that we get full details once we get the final report so that we can satisfy ourselves that from the beginning, the shifting of the funding itself, the movement of that, it was all above board because when we get these kinds of reports, it is just raising massive, massive concerns and alarm bells is going off. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Stain. Yes, Chair. Yes, Yeah, I think let me also echo the same uh, concerns as Honorable Stain that uh, it is really disingenuous of the, of the minister to say we have gone public about these matters. These are necessarily, as a matter of fact, public matters. And before we even went public, the minister must not be mischievous. He must tell the meeting now that uh, we tried to solicit information from her uh, as constructively as possible. And she must also tell this meeting that in her response, the answers were vague, were clueless of what is happening in her own department. And, and in relation especially about the circumstances why the Auditor General is involved in this matter, in relation to what the, the minister in her own letter to the speaker highlighted as accounting treatment of conditional grants under agricultural land holding account. We find it unacceptable that the Office of the Auditor General had to intervene to a matter which the, which the minister through her department should Honorable, take. Yes. Can I, can I please conclude? Can I finish my point? Dr. Matthias. Unless, unless if this meeting Honorable, is not to Matthias. engage. I'm listening. Honorable, yes. Honorable, I'm listening. Honorable Matthias, the uh, chair is trying to get to trying to hear you. Maybe you must switch off your video because we we struggling to hear what you are saying. You are breaking. So maybe if your video is off, and let me also ask other members to switch off their videos, so that uh, maybe we get cl uh, a clarity on the on what Honorable Matthias is trying to say to us. Okay, thanks, Honorable Chair. I was not aware that uh, I've got uh, network problems. Yeah. So do you advise me to start from the scratch? Yes, please switch off your video also so that we get what you say. I've switched it off. Now and then. Yes. Am I audible or do I still experience yeah. some? Yeah. You are, sir. Look, I'm saying, I'm, I'm echoing the same views as Honorable Stay that uh, it is unacceptable for the department and the minister to hold 
parliament and members of parliament in the dark about the matter as important as this. And that the minister must be, the minister is disingenuous in that she complains about parties having gone public about this matter. And the point I'm making is this is a public matter. And if we don't find joy through our constructive engagement, which the, the party I belong to had done by writing letters to the minister. And the response that came from the minister was vague, was clueless about what is happening in our own department. That undermines the, the constitutional obligation of members of parliament to hold the executive to account, to keep us in the dark about matters as important as this, and the specific circumstances around why we, the department is unable to meet its legislative obligation to submit the report as prescribed within the time frame. And this relates especially to what the, the, the minister in her letter to the speaker referred to as accounting treatment for conditional grants under agricultural land holding account. We say it is unacceptable that it had to take the office of the Auditor General to intervene so that the department can do the right thing. And even after the, the Auditor General's office has intervened, parliament still in dark, members of parliament like ourselves are still in dark and clueless about what is happening. And this must be called to order and the minister must take responsibility. Thanks so much, Honorable Chairperson. Thanks, Honorable Matthias. Your point is made, and I hope that uh, the minister is taking that. You are clarifying on the point that has been raised and also on why uh, some of you went public on this matter. Honorable Stein has asked um, about uh, two questions. I don't know, Honorable Stein, that. Uh, Maybe this might come out, out of the AG's report on these entities, on what you have indicated. You asked about whether they have tabled their report and the shift from the agric entity lent fund to the money that was shifted. And uh, my take is that uh, the AG could have picked that up. If not, your question stands and I would uh, request your indulgence that we allow the AG to present and check if these matters are not captured in what she will be presenting. Then uh, the minister at the end would have to respond to this, if you agree, so that we don't get into the question and answer sessions for now. Like you rightfully say, we can ask this to the AG. Probably they could have picked this up and we allow them now to present. Honorable Stein, if you agree with me on that one. Through you, Chair. Yes, Honorable Minister. I just thought it's important for me and the Parliamentary uh, Portfolio Committee Secretariat can also confirm with the Speaker's Office. The reports of entities, as the question has been asked, were tabled. The only two which form part of the departmental report is Allah and the deeds registry. But all other entities' reports were tabled 29th of October and the commission on the 30th of June last year. On the issue of Honor Matthias, I will come back at the end because indeed language used is unfortunate, but also factually some statements used are unfortunate. But I will respond to that, uh, Chairperson, as you guide that at the end. But for now, I just wanted to raise the issue of the tabling that has been raised by Honorable Stain. Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Minister. Honorable members, can we then allow the AG to brief us? Yes, Chair, let's proceed and we can deal with it uh, after the presentation. Thanks, Honorable Stain. We hand it now over to the Auditor General, Mayor Komagwe. 
Um, thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning to you and Honorable Members, Honorable Minister, the colleagues from both the departments and entities and the parliamentary colleagues. Um, Chair, we are bringing to you the um, entities um, results on the basis of the annual reports that would have been shared. But perhaps it's appropriate that I start by introducing the team that, is, that has been working on the portfolio. And just for the benefit of everybody once more, my name is Habu Kwamapi. I am the business executive in the Auditor General overseeing the rural portfolio, among others. I'm supported by Ms. Michelle Magerman, um, overseeing the portfolio as well. We also joined by the business executive that is overseeing the KwaZulu Natal province in the Auditor General, Ms. Ndombi Fu Tim Klongo. We also have Mr. Tabodi Dodi, who is a senior manager responsible for the rural portfolio. And we also have Ms. Adele Howard, who is the senior manager that is responsible for Ngwenyama, the trust and the board. That is the team that is accompanying me today. And we also engage with the honorable members as and when the presentation is made. It may be appropriate, Chairperson, that I start by um, just lamenting few items on the tabling of the annual report for the Department of, of Rural. Um, yes, the minister is right. We had concluded the audits for all the entities and the departments um, that would have submitted the financial statement on the 31st of July, as it was required by the, um, the circular and the prescripts. The financial statements for ALA in particular, we received it a bit late. It was on the 30th of September. And yes, there were significant matters that we needed to iron out between ourselves and the National Treasury and the department. And I can confirm today that our team have concluded the conversation with the National Treasury. We therefore at the last stage of finalizing the audit and we should be able to get it concluded um, soon. So that is just an, um, an update on the conclusion of the audit for ALA in particular. Ms. Michelle Magerman, who's directly working on the account, would um, talk to some of the matters as and when we go um, in terms of the timelines if, if there's a need to do so. In the presentation, Chairperson, we will highlight um, the audit outcomes that will cut across the three main focus areas of the AGSA. And that will be the financial statements. We'll highlight the presentation on the um, AOPO, the audit of predetermined objectives in particular, um, that is informed by the APP and the APR of the department and its entities. We we'll also touch on the compliance with the key legislation and you would know that on an annual basis as the AGSA, we determine the focus areas of the legislation that we would want to uplift and highlight for all the entities across government to, for consistency purpose. So we'll touch on that as well. Um, in conclusion, Chairperson, we also just highlight some of the recommendation that we would have put on the table of the entities to consider as and when they proceed in preparation for the new financial year. Um, to the question that has been put on the table already, if you could allow me to already take it, the matter regarding the shifting of the funds between the COVID and ALA, it will not be covered in our presentation because it does not form part of the financial year that we are presenting. It rather form part of the financial year of 2021 for us, and um, that should come later. So I think that question, I'll leave it for the Honorable Minister um, to then close on it. If you could allow me, I just wanted to ask Mr. Tabodi Dodi to fly to the, the presentation and take the honorable members through and we'll come again to take the questions and the comments. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mekomape. Dr. Tabo. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I'm trying to, to share, but it looks like I have not been given access. If maybe the Secretary can just assist me, I'm getting a, an error that says I'm, I'm not a host to, to present. Can the host assist us on that? Please make Mr. Ditodi the co-host that he can share the presentation on the screen. Thank you, Chair. I've made him a host earlier on before the meeting started because I was given his name, but I can't find him 
Now I can't find that. That icon to make him a host. What I have is that is to remove him or allow a video only. So I'm not sure what is happening. Chair, if I may. Yes, uh, may we ask the committee secretary to flood the presentation? I believe I um, should have a copy. That may be easier. Okay, that will help. Honorable Chair. Metlape. Honorable Chair. Yes, Dr. Matthias. Yes, look, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only member of, of this portfolio committee who does not have this presentation. Has this presentation been sent to us in, before, in advance? So uh, if not, can I please get someone to say? It is on the screen now. Yes, even if it's let's, on the let's check if they will share with you that they send it through to you, the secretariat, Mr. Matthias, Honorable well, Matthias. Even if it's in the screen, Honorable Chair, is one of no, the. No, I'm things saying that... I'm asking them to share with you also. Yes, I'm saying even if it's on the screen now. Yeah. It defeats the purpose of members of parliament to, to do oversight if we're going only to receive reports such as this, just, uh, during the, just as the meeting is in progress. It really undermines the purpose. It defeats it. It betrays it. Chairperson, I think we were all sent the email yesterday afternoon at 14.50, but I have to say I'm looking at the recipients and I'm not seeing Honorable Matthias's name here. So I think he was maybe just mistakenly left out, but it was sent to us as yesterday afternoon and I received it on both of my email addresses. Thanks, uh, Honorable Briette. This is what I'm looking also at now and I don't see him on the, on the list. Our apology, Dr. Matthias, that should be rectified, Secretariat. I think we have a group uh, emails that you just sent to all of us. I don't know why you didn't receive it. Um, sorry, Chair. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, apologies to interject, Chair. But... Um, can I raise a point, Chair? Mm. This issue of being sent documentation very late. I think, Chair, we have raised this sharply with the department and with the secretary. We can't be repeating the same issue over and over. This is the big, this is our very first meeting in 2021. And Chair, I, I would like to 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 to, to strongly and it's a meeting. Switch off your, your 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 microphone, chair. <laughs> um, I would like to strongly uh, uh, voice this, chair. This is not acceptable. We can't receive a documentation that we expected to engage at nine. We receive it at about five in the afternoon the, the, the previous day. We are not doing justice to ourselves. We are not doing justice to the people of South Africa that are expecting us to do an oversight and interrogate this documentation. Can I, can I plead again with the department and with the, the entities and with the, our secretariat that this year, can we do things differently? Can we do things differently and, and get documentation prior or can you in, given enough time to do this, to, 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 to engage and interrogate this documentation? Thank you so much. Can yes, I yeah. I want to apologize to members for receiving the presentation late How, because we before we can circulate the presentation to members, we have to be granted permission by the chairperson because it is 
the parliamentary procedure that is the chairperson must first see the presentation and then okay us to forward it to the members. So yesterday we only get time to speak to the chairperson after three o'clock. So that's it, I'm sorry members, it won't happen again. And we will speak to the chairperson about it. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Secretariat. Your points are taken. And uh, like uh, we have agreed last time, let's make sure that the members receive the presentation in time. We understand the situation that the chair found himself in from yesterday. And we fully understand, but omission on Honorable Matthias, it's something that we, we don't understand. But how do you omit one member out of that? He could have received it late also. And I think the apology is befitting to Honorable Matthias. My apology, Honorable members, I'm also having a bereavement in the family, so I'm the only candle. So that is why I'm putting my phone now on silent. I'm burying my uncle tomorrow. But uh, in all fairness, the presentation is now on the screen. Can we allow Mr. Ditodi to present? Dr. Ditodi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. A morning to the Honorable Members and the Honorable Minister and the Department staff. Uh, thank you for the opportunity provided to us to present on the audit outcomes of the entities of the department. And if you could maybe move to, uh, Secretary, you help me to, to move through the pages. If you can go to num slide number two. There on the screen, we've got the AGSA reputation promise. We are saying as the Auditor General of South Africa, we've got a constitutional mandate as the Supreme Audit Institution of South Africa. We exist to strengthen our country's democracy by enabling oversight, accountability, and governance in the public sector through auditing, thereby building public confidence. You can move next. Our role of the AGSA is to reflect on the audit work performed to assist the portfolio committee in its oversight role of assessing the performance of the entities, taking into account the objective of the committee to produce the budgetary review and recommendations report. And next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Yes, on this slide, uh, we are just highlighting the three areas that the AGSA looks at. The first area being the fair presentation of the financial statements. The second area, we also review the reliability and credibility of the performance information that's reported in, in the annual performance report. And we also check compliance with laws and regulations governing the financial affairs of the entities that we audit. Next slide. From our audit, uh, honorable members, we there are different uh, types of audit outcomes that uh, the entities can attain. Starting from the left, we've got a green one, uh, which is unqualified opinion with no findings. This is where uh, we did not find any issues on the financial statements of the entity. There were no non-compliance areas and there was no material findings noted in the performance uh, report as well. This is what we normally refer to as clean audits. And the orange part, we, we get an opinion where the financial statements, we say they, are, they don't have material misstatements, but we could have material uh, findings on non-compliance and performance information. Starting from the purple towards the right, that's where the audit outcome is either qualified adverse or, or disclaimed. Qualified opinion, it's instances where we are saying there are areas in the financial statements that are materially misstated. And adverse uh, it's instances where we are saying the areas that are misstated in the financial statements uh, are cut across various areas that results in us saying the whole set of financial statement is not uh, reliable. And the red part, which is the worst that an entity can attain, is a disclaimed audit opinion. That's instances where we are saying we are not able to express an opinion either due to limitations or information reported in the financial statements not being supported. Next slide, please. 
And these are the colors that will be uh, used just to explain the audit outcomes in the next following slides. Like I had explained the green, the yellow, the purple, and so forth. And we also have got arrows, either green, yellow, or red to say an audit outcome could either be improved, unchanged, or regressed. Just to highlight in this slide, we are reporting on completed audits of the four of the entities. I just wanna, next slide, please. Okay, we've got what we have as an HSA, what we call an, an accountability wheel, where we say if our auditees follow the principles that are embedded in this wheel, uh, it's likely going to, to result in, in better audit outcomes. Where we are saying as, as one of the steps, the entities needs to define their targets. So meaning they need to plan in their annual performance plan in terms of what they wanna do. And once they have planned, they need to implement what has been planned, meaning they must implement implement the basics, there must be internal controls and supervision. And after that has been implemented, there needs to be adequate monitoring by various assurance providers, including ourselves as the AGSA. The portfolio committee needs to also monitor. There's other assurance providers that the entities would have, such as an internal audit. And those will give assurance in terms of is what was planned being implemented and are the controls effective in the environment. And if there are issues or gaps identified, we are saying there needs to be consequences because in the absence of uh, no consequences, it's unlikely that you are going to see the, the results that one anticipates. And we are saying if this accountability will is embedded in most of the, uh, the processes, it's likely going to result in better audit results uh, and it will have a positive impact on the lives of the South African citizens. Next slide, please. In this presentation, uh, these are the entities that we are reporting on, which is the DITS Registration Trading Account, Office of the Valuer General, the Ingonyama Trust, and the Board, and the Commission on Restitution of Land Assets. Land rights, excuse me. Uh, next slide, please. This uh, is a, an overview of the audit outcomes of the entities over the last five years. One would appreciate that uh, what we are striving for is to have as much green as possible on this picture. And we are encouraged by the fact that uh, the deeds office has consistently been in the green over the last four years. And the fact that the OVG in the current year uh, that we are reporting on uh, managed to, to improve from, from the 2018-19 to the 2019-20 audit outcome. So those are the two auditees that obtained an unqualified opinion with no findings. ITB uh, remains stagnant with a qualified uh, audit opinion. Generally, ITB is not improving and uh, the commission as well, uh, it was the first time that the commission submitted a financial statements for, for audit. However, it did receive an, an adverse opinion on the right. We are highlighting the errors. What are the improvements that we've seen? We've seen one improvement, which is the OVG. The ones that have remained stagnant, it's DEEDS and, and Ingonyama. And then we are saying a new audit is, is the commission. Next slide, please. Here on this slide, uh, we are highlighting the whether the information that gets submitted to us, are they credible? And whether are they uh, being submitted uh, timely within the legislated timeline? Uh, Deeds OVG and the commission did submit uh, the financial statements on time. The, the Ingonyama were slightly late. The financial statements of Deeds and OVG did not have any, any errors. However, there was no uh, improvement really on the submission of the financial statements after audit for the commission and, and in Gonyama, both the trust and the board, because in Gonyama uh, got an audit outcome, the, tr the in Gonyama trust board got an audit outcome of qualified, the trust and the commission received an adverse audit opinion. And the qualification uh, areas for the Ingonyama Trust Board was on the irregular expenditure. This is a repeat qualification area. On the trust, it's on a uh, property plan and equipment and accounting for expenditure. This is also a repeat qualification area. And on the commission, uh, uh, the areas that were qualified is uh, revenue and expenditure. Next slide, please. 
This slide relates to the outcome on the performance report. This slide is, is really showing an, an improvement to say, if you look at the OVG and the Ingonyama uh, on the performance report submitted, we are seeing an improvement. Uh, there are no material uh, findings identified on the performance report that were submitted for, for audit. And we commend the entities for, for this. Uh, next slide, please. This slide, we are flagging the non-compliance with, with legislation to say, what are the non-compliance areas that we, we have seen? Like I had mentioned, uh, DEEDS and OVG did not have any findings. We did know the findings within Ingonyama and the commission for, for Ingonyama, the first uh, uh, Non-compliance is the late submission of the financial statements beyond 30th or 31st of July. On the commission, the quality of the financial statements was, was not up to the required standard, and there are findings on Ingonyama relating to procurement and contract management and the processes and effective steps not being taken to prevent a irregular and fruitless industrial expenditure. Next slide. On this slide, we, we do make an assessment of the uh, status of the internal control environment where we look at the area of effective leadership, proper record keeping, daily and monthly controls, review and compliance. You'll see the areas that we, we are either in yellow or in red. It, it's mainly around the the commission and Ingonyama Trust. We are saying inadequate daily and monthly the controls to confirm the accuracy of information in the preparation of the financial statements needs to be enhanced so that we can get a credible financial information that is free of material statement and a culture of compliance needs to be enforced and, and monitored to ensure that SCM uh, transcripts are complied with. Next slide. This slide, uh, we are highlighting what is the fruitless and wasteful expenditure that was incurred over the last two years in, in these four entities. What we are seeing is, is a reduction in a fruitless and wasteful expenditure. If you look at 2018-19, across an aggregate for these four entities, last year there was fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Uh, of 99,000. This year it's 35,000, and the bulk of that came from uh, Ingonyama Trust in the tune of about 25,000. And this related to expenditure that was, that was incurred on a mobile cold room that was hired and, and was not necessarily uh, used or no value was derived for some of the days that it was on site for. The next slide, please. Uh, on this one is the irregular expenditure. We've also seen a, a reduction in the irregular expenditure across these entities, which then, uh, if you look at the bar, it moved from 1.9 in aggregate in these four entities to just below a million at 970,000. And also, this is also incurred mainly within the Ingonyama Trust Board due to non compliance with SCM uh, transcript. What I want to highlight is that although the picture looks like it's a decrease on the reported numbers, the Ingonyama Trust Board was uh, qualified on the completeness of the disclosed irregular expenditure. So, our audit uh, opinion says. We are not uh, comfortable on, on the completeness of the disclosed irregular expenditure. So that number could potentially be more. And next slide, please. Here on, on, on this slide, we are, we are saying uh, there has been a stagnation in SCM uh, compliance. Uh, these are the most common findings that we noted in the supply chain management where uh, there's no declarations of interest and uh, not submitted by suppliers at the Ingonyama Trust Board. There's procurement without obtaining the necessary uh, quotations, less deviations, and in certain instances, procurement is done without obtaining the tax clearance or confirming the tax compliance of the suppliers with the uh, National Treasury's Central Supplier Database. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, Steve. On this slide, uh, we, we as the Office of the AGSA, we've engaged with National Treasury to, to come up with what we believe are 
the preventative controls to say if we guard against these uh, six key areas, which is a supply chain management, contract management, the process for processing of payments, employee processes for appointment and payroll, managing the assets and liabilities and revenue management. We are saying if preventative controls are implemented by senior management, the accounting officer or the accounting authority and internal audit and audit committee provide the necessary monitoring and oversight, it's likely going to, to prevent some of the issues that we, we find ourselves sometimes having to report. However, we are saying if some of these things are not implemented, the, the likely outcome of it is that there will be a material irregularities and poor audit outcomes, which is going to probably result in financial loss. Uh, there could be investigations which can get prolonged and cost uh, quite a significant amount of money. Disciplinary processes needs to kick in and some in certain instances, the entities could be sued or they could have to take a litigation steps themselves against where there could have been irregularities. Next slide, please. And on this slide, we are saying these are key drivers that we are seeing on some of our clean audits that we, because obviously we've got a, a view, not necessarily of this entity, but of all other entities audited by the Auditor General to say, what is it that we are seeing on the entities that are getting it right? And, and what these entities are getting right are the tone and control culture. So meaning if the tone and control culture of, of the executive and top management, it's likely that the, the audit outcomes, it, it's going to be improving. Some of the areas as well is institutionalized internal controls, uh, procurement of goods and services, which I've already mentioned, and there needs to be adequate uh, preparation and review of financial statements and managing the assets of, of the entities. Next slide. On this slide, uh, we are highlighting uh, the corrective actions because normally once we conclude, let's say 2018-19 audit, we then uh, management is, is uh, required to come up with an action plan to address some of the issues that we would have raised. So here we are highlighting what has been implemented or what has not been adequately implemented in the entities that we are reporting on. Uh, the DITS office continues to maintain an adequate system of internal controls that enables accurate reporting and compliance with legislation. The OVG, like I had mentioned, did improve uh, the management of the OVG uh, in, in the year that we are reporting, proactively reviewed their annual performance plan and report and engaged us timely on how their indicators are weighted and how the information will be collected and reported. So we, 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 we are commending the OVG for being proactive in, in that regard. The commission has submitted uh, the financial statements uh, for the first time this year, but we are saying the commission was not adequately supported or resourced in the preparation of the uh, financial statements to ensure compliance with financial uh, reporting. The ITB uh, needs to, uh, uh, meaning on, on the, Ingo, the board, the Ingonyama Trust Board, action plans to address the internal deficiencies identified were not adequately developed, implemented, or monitored, which resulted in the recurring uh, findings. And also on the Ingonyama Trust, they did not implement ad adequate reviews to ensure financial statements submitted for audit are free of material misstatements. Next slide, please. Uh, on this slide, uh, here we are highlighting some of the audit concerns that we've noted or have experienced as the Office of the Auditor General on the audit of the Ingonyama Trust Board and, and the Trust. One, one area being there has been significant disagreements with the Ingonyama Trust Board on audit findings and audit outcomes. The compliance areas from prior years remains a key disagreement. Delays are, were experienced in obtaining management responses on communication with, on findings due to various officials being on special leaves. Reviews of the financial statements were, were not adequate. That's why the audit outcomes are, are not so great. 
and the leadership did not establish effective and monitoring over the financial reporting uh, process. And, and I have already alluded to the issue of the action plans not being adequately developed and implemented and supply chain not being followed in, in certain regards and steps not being taken to prevent irregular expenditure from uh, reoccurring. Next slide, please. On this slide, we, we, we then have we had to analyze from our side to say, what is the key issue that is causing uh, the audit outcomes in this instance, the ones that are not favorable? Uh, we, these are the two areas we are saying, it's either there's slow or no response from, from management, where management don't take adequate steps to ensure that the respective entities comply with the relevant legislation governing the reporting and governance of these entities, and the commitment made to support uh, the commission in the preparation of the financial statements was not tenuously implemented. And there's also some uh, instability or no vacancies in certain areas to close the gap on financial reporting. Next slide. Uh, on this slide, we are then saying these are the recommendations that uh, we are putting forward as the AGSA to say there needs to be adequate support provided to the commission in the preparation and review of the financial statements submitted for audit. Uh, for Ingonyama Trust Board and the trust, we are saying there needs to be an agent intervention to resolve the structural and operating structures of the entity and to ensure that the appropriate governance are, are in line with the activities of the legislation. And then also Ingonyama Trust needs to do a detailed exercise to identify properties that are owned by the trust, more specifically properties that are in the townships that needs to be brought in into the financial statements of, of the trust. There's also the issue of a municipal property rates that continue to be an area of disagreement. There needs to be, these needs to be obtained and recorded in the accounting records of the, of the trust and the and this needs to be made to make sure that they are accurate and complete. And from the committee side, we are saying the committee needs to regularly monitor the implementation of the action plans by the entities to ensure that they do attend to these matters in a timely manner. Next slide, I think it's the end of the slides. Yes, thank you. Thanks, uh, honorable members, uh, back to you, thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Ditodi. Mekoma, is there anything before I hand over to honorable members to interact with the presentation? Do you have any other additions? Um, thank you so much. I think from our side, Chair, um, it is a privilege for the portfolio to have the entities like your DIS and your Valuator General because there's an opportunity then to share the best practices. And we're hoping that what we are seeing between those two entities can replicate within the portfolio. But I think we are encouraged as the AGSA by the best practices that are coming from that side, while we're still encouraging the rest of the entities to partner successfully in just making sure that we replicate um, the gains that we've made on those two entities. Other than that, Chair, I'll pause here and take the, the questions and the comments. Thanks, uh, Mekwamapa. Honorable members, that is the presentation on entities, your deeds registration, Office of Value General, the Commission on Land on Restitution and Land Rights, as well as the Ingonyama Trust and Ingonyama Trust Board. Can I then open the floor for your interaction, your comments and questions? Honorable Kappa. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. And let me first of all thank the report or the presentation from the Office of the AGSA. Uh, it is quite useful and informative. But if I have a one major concern, which is on the repeat findings. In this case, I'm having a concern that if these repeat findings continue to come, who is responsible for uh, being them being repeated and not actually being corrected? 
And now, uh, it, what, what is a, supposed to be a consequence here? Because this takes me also now to the last, last, last part of the recommendation, which talks now to the committee. And therefore it means something has to be done because if uh, the, 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 these findings continue, it means when they responded and promised to correct them, they were not honest or there's some uh, arrogance or there's some ignorance, but there is something which has to be corrected here. Uh, Chair, that's why I think that Chair, this why I'll get I mean, uh, clarity from the, from the AG. At the same time, it seems to me that there is opinion on or uh, some things that has to be said or done by the committee in this respect. It doesn't help if there will be work that is being repeated several times. Why is it not, if they have promised to change, why did they not? And who is responsible for this part? Is it on the governance or the management? I thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Kappa. Honorable Stein. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you to the presenters. Chairperson, my question would be uh, mostly focused um, on the, qual the uh, statement that says the quality of the financial statement of the Commission of the Re Restitution of Land Rights. Um, I was concerned, Chair, when we, when we received the annual report last year and we looked at the fact that the department says they have actually um, achieved more than their target which we are grateful for because we need to finalize all these land um, claims, Chair. But again, my, my concern is on quality of financial statements. Um, I know we have discussed in the past that at one stage they will zoom in as the Auditor General more into um, issues like this one when it comes up. If it is a quality issue, what is the, the um, uh, I'm thinking of the English words, but what is the, the extent of it? How, how bad is it? Um, because I've seen in the past, Chairperson, that once you want to um, uh, step its back, um, you just make sure that all your paperwork is so dear my God that it's almost impossible to find out what's going on. So if I can just ask the, uh, the, the, the presenters to give us some kind of idea of how bad is the quality of the statement. It must be bad if it comes up as a specific finding from that department. Then Chairperson, I just want to go back to my, to my first um, issue and thank you for answering that question of the agricultural land holdings account. I know that we're not discussing at the moment and I know it's not part of this presentation. My concern is the money, the, the 900 million rand was rolled over or, or, or special dispensation by treasury to come from the 2019-20 year. So that will fall directly into the um, into the time period that the Auditor General will look into. So I'm, I'm requesting them to look at that because um, it, it is a concern that there was 900 million rand lying around while land reform is not um, getting its targets. They are um, not giving, uh, uh, buying more land for land reform beneficiaries, but they had that 900 million rand just lying there and could give uh, uh, over to the department, you know, just within one week's notice. So that is why I raised that um, as a specific concern. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Stein. Honorable Briet. Thank you, Chairperson. I don't have a question to the Auditor General per se, but um, maybe just a statement and a, and a comment that I would like to have my colleagues also think of and what I have I have noticed when, when um, the, the AG has given its presentation. I think um, the ITB is still a matter of grave concern to all of us um, 
you know, if you look at the internal controls, if you look at the continual findings, as Honorable Klapa has also mentioned, and I think that is something we need to look at, Chairperson. I was also worried, and I'm so glad Honorable Stain asked that question with, re with regard to CRLR and their um, financial misstatements, um, the fact that they had an adverse opinion um, on their financial statements, and I would like to know how bad it is. And um, specifically, I don't think it's necessarily, and, and some, something that I that I have noticed specifically with these with these reports and something that is worrying to me it doesn't necessarily seem that we are improving the entities are not improving we are stagnating or regressing in some instances um, I think it was ITB and CIA, uh, the commission that regre regress in terms of of risk management if I remembered correctly in term terms of the internal contro controls and what is clear to me is that even though um, one or two of the instances within our um, within the audit outcome we are improving on, that does not necessarily speak to service delivery. It does not speak to what is happening on the ground. And that is my fear, Chairperson, that we are getting so worried and we are getting so caught up and we just need to have a clean audit. Um, it just needs to look pretty, that we are not looking at what is happening on the ground, what are the actual problems there. And... Um, Yes, Chairperson, I'm just trying to look and, and, and think and see, see at my notes. I think um, later when we speak to the department, I would I would continue on that because I'm also worried about the fact that um, that the OLA um, is still outstanding, that we don't have a clear cut deadline as to when that will be finished. And I think in terms of, um, of Dr. DLR, we need to see the whole picture um, in terms of what is happening on the ground and having our um, having one of the, you know, having the department actually outstanding on its uh, on its audit reports is quite worrying for me. I come from the free state, as you know, and we had actually, and my English words are also lost, but in the free state, we actually got into a gewoonte where our agricultural department just always had an excuse as to why it couldn't, why it disagreed with, with, um, with the AGSA regarding its audit opinions. And we just got into this horrible cycle. And I would not not like to see that with a national department but chairperson that is maybe just all the thoughts from my side thank you thanks uh, honorable briet honorable matthias well thanks uh, thanks so much honorable chair look uh, it would be foolish for me to ask a question or to make a comment about this presentation. Rather, let me wait for the re responses from the letter that I sent to the minister. I hope uh, some of the questions I would have wanted to raise here would be, would be adequately answered uh, by the minister through, through, through the letter that I sent to her. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ndata Matias. Honorable Chwete. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chairperson, I don't have a question uh, to Auditor General. Um, I appreciate the presentation. Um, for me, Chair, it's just a comment and uh, pleading with my colleagues that indeed, the issue of ITB is a, is, a, is a thorny issue for the committee. And Chair, I would, I, I would really like to appeal to, the, to my colleagues that we need to take a, 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 thorough, a thorough look at this. I'm, really con I'm saying this, Chair, because I'm concerned, I'm also concerned about the repeat findings by AG. Um, OAG highlighted the stagnation of on, on ESCM issues. The, the, especially my highlight chair is the supply without tax clearance. Out of three, I'm not saying the other three are not important, but that one, Jay, it stands out for me. The supply without a tax clearance chair uh, is totally against the PFMA Act uh, 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 regulations and stuff. Now, Chair, I like to persuade 
my colleagues that on this issue of ITB, we need to resolve and resolve very fast. It's either it's the management of the ITB, the board, or the department, but we need to implement the recommendation of the AG. We need to take a stand firm on the accounting a, a, a procedure. Someone must account about what is happening here. We can't have all these issues repeatedly a, a, a tabled in front of us and we will just talk. We can't, we are no, I am not gonna be a, turned into a talk shop. Okay? Someone must, something must happen here. Consequent management must be implemented. We need to investigate what is happening why there is a poor quality of financial statements of ITB, why they are submitting late after they requested an extension of, uh, of about months that they will submit and they were asked, uh, 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 submitted and they were given that extension and they submitted late and of a poor quality. And when they are invited to present to a committee, even their presentation is not up to a, 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 an acceptable professional standard that they are presenting to the parliament. Chairperson, I'm really concerned about this entity. I am really concerned about this entity and the behavior of people that are leading this entity. This entity. Someone does not want to account. That is my view, Chair. I'm subject, I'm subjected to be corrected, but how they present themselves through administration and through presenting to in front of the committee, they are not showing any interest. And unfortunately, we are dealing with the public press. That is our responsibility to do in oversight and make them accountable of what they are doing. So, Chair, on this issue of e e repeat findings by AG. I appeal to my colleagues that we need to have a look at this and implement the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Chair. Honorable Mbambama. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, if you will allow me, I will not switch on my video as I'm in a very unreliable place. So I'll switch off my video. It's okay. Ma um, my I don't have any questions for the Auditor General, but like my colleagues, I am very much concerned around the ITP and um, the CRLR. Now, um, unfortunately, the Chief Lands Claims Commissioner is not here and neither is the Director General of the Department, who I feel would be uh, having oversight all, over all of this, and the advocate himself is not here for the ITP. Um, I have a direct question to the minister. What is she going to do about this? What are the plans going forward? You know, with the ITP, Ingonyama Trust, we've had this, I've been in parliament for plus minus four years, and we've had the same reports every year from the Auditor General. It seems like, you know, the management of uh, the Ingonyama Trust Board are just not interested in, in, in what we say. They're not interested in what the department says. They are just carrying on with impunity, doing whatever they want to do, not reporting on time, et cetera, et cetera. So I would really like to know what is the plan from the minister, because at the end of the day, the buck stops with her. Exactly the same with the uh, Land Claims Commission. We've heard that the Lands Claim Commission has had no support for a very long time. There are vacancies in there. How are they expected to do their job if one, they are not given support from internally in the department and number two, if the vacancies are not filled? So my questions are directly to the minister. Minister, what are you going to do about these two entities? Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Mbabama. Honorable Kabekulu. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Members. 
uh, I think I'll uh, uh, join the queue on what uh, other members of uh, the portfolio committee have just been saying with regards to the ITB issues. Seemingly, Chair, uh, the ITB uh, uh, does not want to get its house clean. It continuously uh, uh, sort of uh, been using the actors in the offices, which is administration, I, I, I hope. Seemingly, they are not willing to improve as required. But um, my question will go to the minister. The minister once promised that uh, she was going to have a, a meeting with the, the chairperson of, of, of the board. And one would maybe uh, request if, if the minister can maybe uh, uh, inform this portfolio committee on the deliberations and discussions that she once had with, with, with the chairman of, of the board on the matters concerning uh, 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 the way uh, the board is, is, is being uh, uh, administered. I, I, I'll, I'll really, really uh, plead that uh, we be uh, maybe a brief, uh, uh, because seemingly the ITP, we've been reading the newspapers about people uh, suspended or for, for some time, and afterwards they, they get back to, to work. The last uh, 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 report I, I once read was the issue of, of the, the, the CEO uh, and, and, and the C, uh, is it C, C, chief financial officer who have been out for some time through the, the CCMA, then they are back at work and, and, and the CEO has, has, has uh, uh, resigned because of the pension maybe. Of, of, of the age. That, that, that would be my, my, my take, uh, uh, Chairperson, on, on the matter. But it's very uh, worrying that uh, the ITP seemingly has never been prepared to improve when it comes to the administration of the offices. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Kabekulu. Honorable Masipa. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to also appreciate the Auditor General's work and their independency with regards to really supporting us to strengthen the country's democracy. Um, like my colleagues, really, we are worried about the, I'm worried about the significant disagreement um, on audit finding. And uh, the um, ITB has shown even in the past that when they came to us, you know, they just disagree on everything that we are speaking about or what what we are engaging them on. So there's also concerns about poor management responses. The question that I have is really to the minister is why do we keep this incompetent individuals in this state in entities? When are things going to stop at ITP? Because it's five years down the line, we are still debating the same issues. It is really concerning, and I think, uh, Chair, we need to, um, you know, find answers to these things. We cannot really continue on this uh, trajectory. Surely, if this was a business, heads were going to roll. And uh, really, to the minister, as an accounting officer or an executive authority, what are you doing really to help us get this ITB in order? Because here we're talking about, you know, the, um, the fiscus of the citizens of this country that are paying their taxes to really ensure that uh, uh, they get uh, the value for the money. Uh, ITB is not really playing the, uh, the ball, it's really not coming to party. Chair, my request is that the minister really assist us, intervene and provide us the feedback regarding her engagement with ITB. As previously, it was indicated that the minister was going to engage ITB and address these issues. Um, thank you. I think the rest of the audit finding, I think they are acceptable. We can you know, live with them, but I think ITB is a big concern. And thank you to the Auditor General for the work that they are doing. Thanks, uh, Honorable Masipa. Honorable Mundwedi. Mm. 
Dr. Montredi, is he back with us in the platform? Dr. Mm -hmm. Montredi is having challenges. Is he, is he on the platform? He's on the platform chair, but okay. he's starting to connect in the Bundes. Honorable Montredi, yeah. I'm giving the platform. Okay, I will check him again. Maybe from my side, uh, honorable members, honorable minister and the AG, let me also join the honorable members who are say congratulating the death registry and the OVG on uh, sterling performance and we hope they will maintain this audit opinion of uh, unqualified with no findings. Um, Honorable Minister, on the commission, um, the recommendation here is that uh, there should be adequate support, especially on compilation of your annual financial statements and also on oversight including the quarterly monitoring of preparation of financial statements. Is this doable? We have seen on the previous uh, engagement that there's a move for the autonomy of the commission. Presentation had uh, its own uh, time frames and what is going to happen and how it should happen. And I remember the concern was also on the vacancy rate of our key positions. Is there movement in this regard without necessarily asking for the report that we will still have on progress on the moving out or the autonomy of uh, the commission? Is there adequate financial support or the committee again needs to submit again the need for financial top up from treasury or what is it that needs to be done in this regard. On the IT and ITB, I'm also concerned honorable members like all of us are saying, When you look at to the slide deals with the audit concerns of the IT and ITB, the main thing, I think the main challenge facing us here is the contestation for legality of operations of ITB. And this is something that we need really to pay attention to. I've seen on the platform that Ingonyama Trust Board is here with us. What is it that they really want or will make them to comply with what is expected on public funds? And I want to ask the, the AG, we have had now recently uh, the late Ntatema that uh, you have now teeth as the Auditor General of South Africa you have that uh, permission or you have the competency to take on institutions that don't comply or are not doing things right. What is your stance here? What recourse do you have in terms of the ITB with audited repeat findings that they are not attending to and all these challenges that we have alluded to that are repeat in their nature year in, year out. The regular expenditure, when you read out of this is that um, it is in an incomplete disclosure, which is something very serious. Whether it's deliberate or why is there an incomplete disclosure of irregular expenditure? Hence I'm asking what recourse do you have in terms of the mandate or in terms of the competency that you have been given now recently of being able 
to ensure that uh, there's consequence management as the Auditor General of South Africa. I also want to check with Minister because the most of the challenges here, summing them up, it's about structural operations within the board. I know Minister, you reported previously, and it was there out also in the media that uh, there's an interim board that has been appointed. And surely the term of office of the board should have came to an end. How will you go about addressing this challenge that one honorable member has indicated here, Hori, what will it take you to appoint people that are in the trust board and the board? Does the current legislation minister give you the powers to make sure that you do what the committee is impressing upon you as a executive authority on issues that are in Gunyama? Or what do you think in your best knowledge and experience, even now and previously, could be a way out on uh, the challenges that are brought here, especially on appointment Yadi board members? Thanks. Honorable Muntwedi, are you back with us? So that I give you the platform. In his absence, can I then allow the AGSA and uh, then the minister to come after the AGSA on those submissions and questions of clarity? Um, th thank you so much, Chairperson. Um, let me start by acknowledging the available comments and questions that were brought forward by the um, honorable members. We do, we do take note of all of them. Um, I'm going to try and respond to the few questions that would have been raised. And the first one, um, the question was, um, so who's the who must do what in relation to the repeat findings? And I'm gonna link this question to your question, Chairperson, of um, the role of the AGSA so far as uh, the Public Audit Act amendment is concerned. Um, let me start by saying as a basic and as a standard, um, the PFMA put the responsibility of accountability on the doorsteps of the accounting officer, which would mean that the accounting officer remain responsible for implementing a solid sustainable control environment that will not only prevent um, errors, but it will also detect things that may not have gone right. Therefore, from our side, we still audit with expectations that the accounting officer accept the total responsibility as highlighted in the PFMA. And therefore, the repeat findings in terms of who must do what, it is vital and crucial that the accounting officer implement the process of consequence management with the support of the executive, of course, from the oversight perspective, from the minister's side. So far as the AGSA, the Public Audit Act is content. Yes, you're right, Chairperson, that the amendment to the Public Audit Act had given the AGSA an additional space to be able to activate some of the, of the prescripts such that we promote accountability. How we are dealing with it in the office as it stands we, we followed a phase-in approach in taking on board the ODTs. You would imagine that this act, we needed to roll it out right from local government to the provincial departments right up until national department. As, as it stands, we have not yet included the rural portfolio. We had obviously started prioritizing the bigger departments, the likes of your basic education, your health and the likes. And as we are going, we are hopeful that we will be bringing on board the rural development. And when we do that, it will then empower us to activate some of the responsibilities that the, um, the Public Audit Act put on our doorsteps to support and encourage not only ITB, but all other entities that require encouragement in terms of doing what ought to be done so far as financial management is concerned. I think there was a question, um, Chairperson, that had to do with the Commission. And I think in simple terms, it said, how bad is it? 
So you would imagine at the beginning of the presentation, Mr. Didodi was highlighting the categories of the audit opinion, and we were starting from the good ones that we're hoping to get, and that would be your unqualified right up until the worst that we're sitting with. So commission is sitting with adverse opinion, and adverse opinion just means your errors are so pervasive that your reporting is misleading to the users. That's just in simple terms. So it is bad, obviously, because the decision making that has to happen on the basis of the financial statements, we believe that it will not be informed and reliable. Therefore, it remains vital that we correct those errors to facilitate the right conversations so far as the financial management of the, con of the commission are concerned. And I think it is probably linked to the question around, sometimes we see a clean audit, but we cannot necessarily marry it to the service delivery. And I think it's important for me to just highlight once more that the importance of the so-called clean audit, which is actually an unqualified audit opinion, is such that we're saying, if you report transparently and fairly and reliably, you will then enable all other stakeholders to make the decision based on reliable records, which would mean that if you report transparently, if it so happened that you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, so far as service delivery is concerned, it will be so crystal clear in your reporting such that all other people that need to take action, they'll be able to take action, as opposed to the reporting that is not reliable and not as transparent as we hope it to be. Because whatever the decision that has been made, one could always argue that it may not necessarily be informed, which then distort the direction that may be given on the basis of the financial records that are in front of the decision maker. So for us, the importance of reliable reporting, it is to enable facilitation of the conversation and decision by all other stakeholders, right from the minister, the portfolio committee, parliament in general, and the users and the public in general should be able to see if you didn't do what you ought to be doing, it needs to be transparently and reliably reported such that people are able to hold you accountable. And when you talk about the remedial action, they can be aligned to the root cause of where the problem is. I just want to put here a clear pocket. Um, I think the rest were mainly the comments which we noted, and I think I'll, I'll, I'll pause a bit. Um, thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Mekomape. I know this was the brief about uh, the, by the Auditor General and the department is still to present but the minister is here, hence members are taking advantage and posing other questions to you directly, minister. But probably before you come in um, earlier on, I think it is it's this something that we need to clear up that uh, members spoke about the late uh, receipt of reports. We must absolve the department on this one that this report came directly from the Auditor General and it was not from the department and the secretariat had to send it as and when they received it after the chairperson has given green light on it. And it shouldn't be like on this one, the department is at fault. Depending on what time they received it from the auditor general, they had to clear it up with the chairperson first. Minister, there are points that has been uh, pointed to you, questions of clarity and comments. Do you want to take a bite on those? Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Honourable Chair. I just want to get, before the, the, the Minister make a, a contribution, just want to get clear. Who are you absolving and for what? The department on the late receipt of the presentation of today, because it came from the Auditor General, not from the department. The Secretary... Not wrong. It's wrong to absolve, and I don't know why you, you go back to this matter, because it was resolved with the spirit that we have accepted the apology. But if you absolve anybody or any institution, you open the, the can of worms. Can we please let the sleeping dog sleep? And no one must be absolved for failure to do the most basic mundane of functions which a useless ANC branch secretary understand that must be done. Reporting is an important function and it has to be done with utmost precision. 
No one must be absolved for failure to do his or her work. And let the sleeping dog sleep. Dr. Matthias, as the sleeping dogs are sleeping, the report came from the Auditor General's office. It's not the department that sent the report to us. The report came from the Auditor General, went to the Chairperson's office. The Secretariat had to clear it first. Hence, they said they got the Chairperson who got hold of the Chairperson at three. And the report was then sent fair that on what we have always been concerned about, that we must not receive reports late. It is like it was from the department. Hence, I'm clearing it for now to say this one honorable members did not come directly from the department. And we have apologized on the receipt late as the secretariat has clarified. So it will not be correct that we go out of the meeting as if the department is at fault on this one. Clarity doesn't take anything out of what we said, but it is correct that we indicate that this brief was from the Auditor General, not the department. It is a matter that moving forward, if they become again back to what we have always uh, been raising as a concern, we will not shy away from saying that. But where there's not uh, a matter is not there at their fault, we should be able to say it. We cannot just round up matters and make sure and make as if. That is not correct, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson uh, and members on the issues that have been raised in this report of the Auditor General regarding the performance of the various entities in the financial year. Earlier on, I did indicate that I will clarify some of the matters that were raised by Honorable Maitreas um, in his intervention. I just want to state it for the record that I received on the 23rd of January, a WhatsApp message from Honorable Matthias with the letter where he was seeking clarity and expressing his displeasure of the department in requesting an extension from the speaker as well as the chair of the NCOP on the tabling of the annual report. In that WhatsApp, he had included a, an email that he had sent to the department to the PA as well as the chief of staff using wrong email addresses. And I corrected it as such and gave Honorable Matthias the right email addresses and indicated that therefore I had not received his letter, but I will respond to it given that he had sent me and which I have done. I am not sure when it is indicated by Honorable Matthias that I should have briefed the committee on matters that were still under discussion between Auditor General and the department, which also included Treasury. I might have been wrong, but from where I sat, I didn't think that it required at that time to come to the portfolio committee on matters where we were still trying to find one another with the AG and the Treasury, for instance. So I want to put that uh, on record that it was no failure on our part not to take the committee into consideration because the matter were not resolved. And I'm sure Honorable Matthias ahead when the Auditor General gave her report and made inference on this matter as well as to what was at issue. I want to indeed agree with the concerns that have been raised by members as it has been highlighted in the report, both of the ITP and the commission. In the 2018-2019 audit, the Auditor General had raised a concern that from where they sit, the legislation of the commission requires it to be a standard loan entity and not be submerged in the department as it had happened. And they actually impressed upon government to actually do that corrective measure so that 
the commission can be instituted according to its legislation and be properly supported and funded. What has happened now is that the discussions between the commission, the department, as well as the public service commission and treasury are at an advanced stage to deal with that matter that the AG had raised in the 2018-2019 report. And therefore, in the current phase where the Auditor General had started auditing the commission independent of the department, this is where correctly so, as the Auditor General says, that we need as a department to actually give enough support, particularly on the financial issues so that the Auditor General can be able to do its work in terms of financial reporting adequately. And we take note of the recommendation that the AG is making, and we will do it, honorable members. With regard to the ITB, indeed, these matters, as members have said, have been a concern to the committee, which actually necessitated the minister and the department to engage both the board and the management of the ITB about governance in the ITB itself, as well as how the management and the work that it's supposed to do is being undertaken and what was perceived to be more of the executive role of the chairperson of the ITB. We have had several meetings and we're continuing also engaging the trustee to express our concern about the matters of the governance within the ITB. One of the measures that we have decided as a department we're going to undertake is the secondment of certain uh, officials to the ITB so that we are able to also get deeper understanding of what the challenges are in the institution. I know yesterday that the IDP uh, members of the board that are serving on the finance committee met with the IG so that as the board itself understand better what are the issues that the IDP, the AG has actually picked up. We also discussed with the trustee to strengthen that board because some other members had already uh, resigned. And we are hopeful that with the strengthening that we've done before the finalization of the new board, we will be able to see some movement. And as members know, this has been one of the challenging entities for us in actually dealing with its accountability, both in terms of its assets, as well as the resources that are being expended to the board to undertake its function. We're also looking at the legislation because the way the legislation of the ITB is structured, it actually has limitations on how much power can the minister have in actually regulating that board effectively like any of the entities. So these are the matters that we will come back to the committee to brief them where we think there is need to be an amendment or where we think there's a clash between the ITB Act as well as the Trust Act that also governs the ITB, given that this is a trust. So I would want to leave it at that, uh, honorable members. Thank you. Thanks, uh, honorable minister, honorable members. Are there any follow-ups on this because this is uh, responding to your earlier submissions. I'm looking at my participants list. I don't see any hands. Having said that, uh, honorable members, it then says, we have uh, concluded the business of today. Oh, Honorable Stain, you're raising your hands. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Chairperson. Chairperson, I asked last time uh, that we as a portfolio 
kommer till Gates the, uh, the reports from the Auditor General that they send to the department so that we can ourselves see what is the issues because it's all good and fine that we are playing an oversight role and we have a responsibility chairperson, but we, if we cannot find out what is the details, even reading the annual reports, uh, reading what the Auditor General says, it makes it very, very difficult. And, and that is why I asked the question to the Auditor General's uh, office on how bad is it? I know what the adverse opinion mean and it is terrible, but we have to have some kind of way of, of getting more details, getting more information, digging into this department, especially the Commission of Restitution of Land Rights and also uh, the, the Ingonyama Trust Board. If we can't have that information, we, we're going to sit with this information year in and year out, asking questions, asking the same questions, wondering about this, and not being able to assist, Jay. Um, if we if we can't play a bigger role in this, we're not going to fix this. Um, I'm just making that proposal again. Um, we can get it. Um, it's apparently uh, not being done regularly, but it's not something that we cannot get hold of. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, uh, Honourable Stain. Your proposal is made. AGSA is here. For sure, they have heard that you reiterating what you proposed uh, back then. Honorable members, colleagues. Honorable Chair. Yes, Senator Matthias. Honorable Matthias. Uh, look, yeah, look, uh, look, we, we, we hold uh, honorable TTs. Uh, in high regard. She's one of the uh, highly respected ministers. And these glaring weaknesses in a department are a matter of concerns. Uh, people will just simply not report, comply with the statutory and regulatory requirements to submit reports. It's just disappointing. Uh, it makes the minister look like an ordinary minister in this cabinet, and for which we don't want to believe that uh, that is the case. All what we can ask the minister is that she must weep, and she will have our best and, and stronger support if, if she acts decisively against those who make that look, against those in the department who are hell-bent in making hell like an ordinary uh, minister. We are of the firm yes, believe that matters of Just hold on. Just hold on. Some um, honorable Chepe. Chepe is getting my so, attention. Yes, honorable uh, Chairperson, can, can, I, can I humbly interject, Chair? Yeah. Can I humbly interject, Chair? Um, by requesting the my fellow colleagues, on, my fellow colleague Honorable Matias, can we can we avoid by all means this local-like dialogue uh, uh, that is happening between Honorable Matias and 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 the minister? Can we can 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 we do that, Chair, for the sake of progress? Um, I think Honorable Matias has made his issue very clear. He has raised his concern. The minister has, has, has responded. Can we go back, Chair, to the meeting of today? And I will humbly suggest that any other member of the committee, if we have other things that we want to raise, Chair, without suppressing anyone, I am not uh, trying to do that, but I'm avoiding a, a, a dialogue where there will be a Honorable Matias saying this, the minister saying that, and all that thing. Can we do? Can, can we have follow-ups? I can't. The 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 the, the, the corrected email submitted to the honourable member. Should he has anything else to, to 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 raise? Then let's do it because this thing is directed to the minister, and we are given answers. Whether we are satisfied with them or not, there are other avenues that we can exhaust. 
I humbly, oh, I am sorry to interrupt with due respect, Honorable Matthias. I am not uh, interrupting you. I am just raising this. Um, can we can we exhaust other avenues instead of uh, you say this, minister say that, and, and all those things? Can we can we maintain this work environment engagement? Thank you. Honorable Chair. Thanks, Honorable Chair. Honorable this, this, this borders on, on censorship. It borders on censorship by Honorable Chet. And if she doesn't know what censorship is, uh, she must read the history of apartheid and how the liberation movement was suppressed and their ideas and views were not expressed public. Because she wants us to go back in the era where censorship was ruling. Now, it is not our business to make the comfortable comfortable. Our business is to make the comfortable uncomfortable and to raise the most uncomfortable of issues. The report as presented here shows glaring weaknesses and massive irregularities right across the board in all the entities that the AGs has, has reported about today. And it's our right to express our disappointment. And in expressing it, in state that such irregularities must be identified and must be swiftly addressed internally in accordance with the internal control measures and the risk policy. Such issues doesn't have to wait for the Auditor General to raise them and only for them to be debated here. If they would, that would be the pattern. If Honorable Trapa, Honorable Matthias, hold if that on. Would be I want to say going Honorable forward. Matthias, we will Honorable be forced Matthias. to say the kind of thing that we are saying here. Honorable Matthias. We are here to serve our people, Honorable Chair. Honorable and Matthias. No one must take us as members of parliament and the people of South Africa for granted. Honorable Matthias, Honorable Kappa is raising a point of order here, and I see Honorable Dumodamini's hand is also up. May I remind you that earlier on, you did not accept to engage on this report. The reason why I left you to speak, you were talking about minister implementing consequence management and having the support of the portfolio committee. But now you're going back to the report that you earlier on saying you don't want to engage on, you will wait for your response. And I'm not going to allow you to go there because I will not go back to the minister and she must respond to what you are raising now on the weaknesses on the report. Please, let's have order on that one. I wanted to give you the opportunity to assure minister that if she takes a stance on consequence management, she got the support of this portfolio committee. Now you go even back opening up the report that you never wanted to engage on. Honorable Kappa. Uh, thank you, Chair. I was um, exactly on that one because I was supporting Honorable Chair in this letter speak to today's uh, agenda and also that to remind that Honorable Matthias had forfeited his right to participate in these issues. Now it is very, very unfair. It is out of order for him to do this. If uh, Honorable Matthias would like that the correspondence that he has done to the to, uh, sent to the minister should be part of the meeting, he should do that, and then it should be in, a, in an agenda of that meeting. Not in this way he's doing. I thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Dumadamene, Deputy Minister. Your hand is up. Thanks very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, the Speakers, uh, the, the members have spoken, uh, and uh, earlier on, and the minister did uh, respond. So I, I will align myself to your guidance that uh, on that aspect raised by the member of parliament, Matthias, on the minister's engagement, we really uh, leave that one for now. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Honorable Zumadamene. I would not go back to you, Honorable Chwete. I don't want you to have dialogue on this meeting. 
we are at the end of this meeting. <laughs> Because I, I can see that now you want to engage and you are saying Honorable Matthias wants to have dialogue with the minister. And I'm not going to allow you to have a dialogue with Honorable Matthias. Honorable members, colleagues, the AGSA, I think we have come to the end of uh, today's meeting and engagement. Let me thank you for allowing me to chair this session on behalf of the chairperson in Kosi Zoliveli Le Mandela, who's yeah. not here with us today. And uh, add that yeah. note, honorable members, I declare yeah. this meeting agent. That the, no good, that will be outside the meeting, what you are raising now. I have closed the meeting. No, I wanted to speak inside the meeting chair. So if it's outside the meeting, it's going to be irrelevant. I just That's wanted to raise the way. point of. I just wanted to raise the point of uh, Annette, um, Honorable Stain, uh, okay. the issue of the management report. I think uh, you did not really make a call on that one because I feel I strongly agree that we definitely need to get this report in time so that we can really interrogate that the Auditor General, when he, they present their report here before us, we are at least, you know, having the report so that we can understand the underlying issues because you know the auditor general is really giving us a high level but we need to get the issues you know to understand what has really um, really happened in this report that's the point i just wanted to make i think uh, honorable Matthias point took us you know off that particular point and i don't think that you have adequate adequately thanks chair I agree, they are here. Honorable Stain is still reiterating her proposal, and I think they are here. They are hearing that once more. And uh, for sure, they have taken it up. I, I, I remember me speaking when to say they are here, and she's reiterating what she has previously proposed. So sorry for having closed the meeting before you make your point. I'm not the kind of the chair that suppresses. Have a nice day, colleagues. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Thank you, chair. <laughs> yes, young lion. Hey, honorable. Okay. Oh, hey. Hi. Good day. Good day, good day, good day. Good day, good day, good day. You know, you know that is 2021, and we are equal to the task. But we, cho we chose to just enjoy a We are talking. We are talking. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking. You're not equal to the task. We, we are, are equal talk. to the task. We are ah. equal to the task. We are not eldership. <laughs> Don't forget talk. that. We are not eldership. But we what is eldership? Because we are eldership. And, 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 and do yeah. gain with respect, you know, we're so many other Into any eldership. Honorable Matthias, it was our outside meeting, our colleagues. Into any eldership. Commissars. Into any eldership, Papa. And the Ireland. Into any eldership. You don't know eldership. Yes, <laughs> come on. You don't know eldership. Into any eldership. I say that outside the meeting. <laughs> we are outside <laughs> the meeting. We are outside I the meeting. Tayata Kaloku. 